So the last time you and I were together, we had been working on some of these array algorithms, and I would like to write another one today. This one is called count sevens. And so this one's gonna return an integer or, uh, answer, and we're gonna call it uh, count seven. And it's gonna take integer data. So we're gonna take an array of integer elements. You have to write it. And here are, I'm going to call the array nums, and it's going to be an integer array. And I'll put some numbers in here. And your job is to count how many sevens there are. So we're going to say the number of sevens is, and then we're going to call our count seven. Okay, so I want you to get together with your partner and write this method to count how many sevens are in the array. Just as a reminder, you'll need to use a loop and you'll need to set up a counter. And each time you go through the loop, you examine another element in the array. And if it happens to be equal to a seven, you're gonna increment the counter and then you'll return the counter at the end. Please do this now. Okay, we're gonna try to count the sevens. I'm gonna ask for a volunteer from the audience. Uh, Mr. Pandali, sir, are you finished? So that's my answer variable. So in this array, there should be three sevens. So if we run this, you should come out with an answer of three. And you can see that it works fine. Okay, the next one we're going to do, I'm going to ask you, I'll leave this up here for you to peruse. Uh, we'll do the next one down here. We'll call it public static Boolean this time, and we'll say all odd. And this will also take another array of integers. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to return true if every single number in this array is odd. And I want it to return false if there are e any, e any even numbers at all, all of them even, one of them even, two of them even, anything like that. I want to do that. So see yeah. if you can work this out with your partner to figure out how would I do that? How would I do to figure out if it's all odd or not? I'll give you another hint. You're going to need this modulo operator, something we haven't used in a while. Please work with your partner to try and create this all odd. So I created two arrays, one that has all odd numbers in it and one that doesn't. And I'm going to call this all odd method twice. First with the first data set, second with uh, the next time with the other one. And this one should come out and print true. And this one should print false. We're going to look at two different ways of solving this problem. I'm going to show you one way, and then I'm going to try to encourage you to write it a different way. So the first way I'm going to solve this is I'm going to solve it the same way I solved this one. So I'm going to establish a counter variable. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to loop through the array. And then down here, I'm going to say if the count is the same as the length of the data, then I'm going to return true. Otherwise, I'm going to return false. And now the only thing I have left to do is figure out how can I tell if the current number I'm sitting on is odd or not. And I'm going to ask Mr. Sneed, sir, can you tell me how can I tell if this item is odd or not? I want to know if data sub i is odd. OK. So here you can see I'm counting how many odd ones there are, right? So I'm counting, oops, I got to put a plus plus there. Uh, I'm, I'm counting how many ones that are odd. And then at the end, I'm comparing to make sure that everything, everything is odd. So if the count comes out to the same number as the number of elements I have in the array, then I know that they must all be odd. See that, right? So let's run this and see if it works. Notice that in my test code, I have uh, two calls, one where it is all odd and the other one where it's not all odd. And so let's run it. And you can see it works. So first one that was all odd, I got true. And second one that's not all odd, I got false. So that seems to be working fine. Now, 
hopefully you're bothered a little bit by this formulation because do I really need to go through the array every element all the time? Or is there some cases where I can prematurely say, you know what, I'm done with my work. I can leave the method right now. Ms. Ria, do you have an, an idea for us? If I find even one even number, I can basically stop working. So let's see if we can reformulate this code to be a little bit different. This time I don't need an answer variable. Uh, I'm going to say that if I make it out alive from the loop, I'm going to return true. And then my question is, I'm going to put a return false here. And I need you to figure out with your partner what should go in here. Ms. Banerjee, what condition should I test for in here so I can declare false for the whole method? OK, if the number is even, I can stop prematurely. So I can say, data sub i equal, oh, sorry, modulo 2 equals 0. Uh, I'm going to say found an even. So if we find an even number, we can stop. Now, my experience has been with students when they first learn about arrays and this trick right here is they're not quite sure like which one should be even, sorry, which one should be true, which one should be false, what condition should we check for. So I have put together a little video here for you called the Blue Sheep of Australia that will hopefully help you organize your thoughts regarding this pattern, which is an important pattern for processing arrays. So let's have a look at that right now.